Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we are so thankful that you guys can join us. We appreciate it. It is very early in the morning for us. We're actually going to be doing these a little bit earlier today. And from here on out, because we are doing some weird shepherding stuff with our cows, and so it takes one of us to shepherd our cows where we take them to. And we're doing a, um, yeah, we're just changing schedules around. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Where's, uh, where's Jabe? He's not joining us right now, but he'll be here shortly, hopefully soon enough. And Nicole's over in the kitchen preparing stuff for the tribe like she always does. And she is a, such a good wife and such a good mother. We really appreciate Yaz's deliverance of families and bringing together of families and things of that nature. Um, how are you guys? Good. good. What did you guys do yesterday? We planted. What did you guys plant? Papayas. How and many? watermelon. What do you guys guess? How many how many papaya trees do you guys think you planted? At least a hundred. At least a hundred, and then you guys planted watermelon. Mm -hmm. All right, but we haven't had any rain yet. No. Which is crazy because we're actually in rainy season here. And it's actually like dry season. We got wind and sun and. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of weird. So they're probably uh, doing stuff in the skies to us and uh, changing all of our weather around and. Weather, Who, yeah, weather, defiant. weather manipulation as they do. Okay, so I want to go into a couple of comments here. This comment, um, the first one is one that doesn't have to do with anything um, of our teaching. And so I want to go over this one first. And so this is from the grand. This is from grandma. And um, this is our adopted grandma who we love dearly and we appreciate and we... You know, I guess before we even begin on this, we, we really want to extend our family out, our table out and our family out to everybody out there. Um, we are a small little tribe with a small little table here, and it feels like our table grows every time that we have um, you guys join us. And um, there's no better place than um, hanging out with those who love Yah and those who, who want to keep his law, statutes, and commands, because that tells us right out of the gate that you guys are... Not maybe not good people, but you are seeking the right things, and um, and hopefully that makes us all good people because that is the way our Creator is, is He's holy in everything that we do. So I want to read this to you guys, and I want you guys to to um, uh, answer up on this. Hey, Boss Clan, I'm needing prayers and insight. As you know, I recently returned to workforce and now need to figure out fall feast days off. I have chose to follow the creation calendar, and that means I need three fourth day and one sixth day off by this calendar. If I am unable to get them off due to newbie status, would it be acceptable to follow another calendar that wouldn't require me the need to take off any work days? Also, the job is cooking for seniors and the house bound. Would that fall under the necessary worker category? Thank you for your prayers and consideration from all who have been through this. I haven't had to worry about this for a long while. Uh, love you all. Yeah, and Grand, I guess Grand is, is um, I don't want to say like really old, but she's she's a grandma, right? She's she's um, She's been retired and now she's back to work and she's she's busting it up and going back to work right out of the gate. That's like something, you know, we got to. We got to bring our spring chicken back to life, and 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 it's it's hard to go back to um, work when you retire for sure. And so um, we've been praying for her. We have actually been praying for her um, strength that she is able to um, just get back into the 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 thing. Okay, right out of the gate, I need your guys. What do you guys think? This is what do you guys think? Both oh. of you. Eli yeah. first. No, but no, not everyone at once. <laughs> Eli, go first. Go. Um. So I don't think that you want to follow a different calendar because the seventh day would be, still be the seventh day. But but the housebound, someone has to take care of the housebound. If not, they'll never get any help. Okay, what do you got? Um, yeah, you can't change the calendar, but like, it's it's still considered work. You have to do survival work, but that comes to the point of. Can can those will those people be able to eat without your with their help? Here, here here is the thing: we are in we are in it, a lot of different times right now. We are we are literally what I think are we are in the end times. Ah, Jade joined us. Hey, Jade, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Okay, you heard that? Did you hear what we were just reading? Uh, a little, yeah. Okay, let me reread it because I I want your input on this. She's chosen to follow the creation calendar. That means I need three fourth day off and one sixth day off the calendar. If I am unable to get them off due to newbie status. Would it be acceptable to follow another calendar that wouldn't require me to take any work days off? Also, the job is cooking for seniors and housebound. Would that fall under the necessary worker category? Okay, Eli, so we, we have two agreements that we can't change the calendar. Okay, what do you have, Jaden, for that? 
Um, so she wants to take other, other like the feast days off, right? Listen, this is what it is. And, and since you guys have never had experience in the real work world, when you end up with a job and you're the new person at that job, you do not, you can't go and say, hey, I need this day off, this day off, this day off. It looks really bad. And plus, I mean, they're, you're there to, they're, they've hired you in to fill in a position where, you know, if you're working those hours, those are the position, those are the hours they need you to work. Okay, so where does this fall with our creator and, and how, do we, how do we get through something like this? Well, I was thinking maybe you could work on the Pagan Hall. You could offer them. You could work on, you'd work at Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving. You could already work with that. Then get your days off. Get your one day off. She's just off. a newbie. She's a newbie right here. And we're not talking December. We're talking right now. We're, we're, December will be a whole other thing. That'll be months later. Okay, so that, that is not an option. So, anyone have anything? I probably have to work those days. You probably have to do it. Okay, where are our precedents here? Where where do we have? What do we have? This she's she's cooking for seniors, so we're talking about like older people who would probably not be able to prepare a lot of their own meals. I don't know how old they are exactly. I don't know if it's a nursing home or if they're just seniors. Um, but the housebound people, most housebound people are unable to get off the couch, right? They can barely get from room to room, and they cannot get out. And so we have we know that they're sick, right? If you're housebound, you're sick. Okay, so that's a qualification of this entire thing. So they're sick. What else? Is anyone other than you guys bobbing your heads with me? Um, they're sick. Does anyone have anything other than me just talking I have, to myself? I don't, I don't really have answers to this. All right, this is what I would say. We know, okay, give me some qualifications of the Torah. Who are we supposed to help? Uh, the widows, the sick, the poor, the needy. Yeah, and I mean, I believe the people of old, if you're, if there's an old person, you're supposed to help the gray-haired people. I mean, that is what our creator has said to do. Respect your elders. Nicole says from across the kitchen, respect your elders. Yeah, respect your elders. Take care of those. Now, what could she do to possibly make this so it was not evil in the sight of Yah? Help them out, yes. I would say what you, what Grand, what I would do, what I've been thinking about this is I believe that you should offer, you should just do your work, but you should not take payment on that day. Now, if you're on a feast day, it should be a holy day. That is where I believe if you are taking money for this, if you are going to donate your time and, and help those people, I believe that that would fall under the same, the, the same qualifications and the same things that we would have where... Um, you're helping. You're helping them out. Just don't take. Don't take money. Don't do servile work on feast days where we're not supposed to do that. Does anybody have anything here? No, I, I don't have. Not much. You should much probably definitely things. be helping them if you have an option to help them. Definitely help the sick out. She has the option to help them, and she has an obligation to help them because that is her job. So, um, anyone have anything? I'm looking for the quorum of anybody other than. Maybe we're doing this too little too early. Everybody's just kind of like looking at me dazed and confused. I just don't have answers for this. I don't, I don't okay. know. Eli, you have anything? Uh, or are you just dazed and confused? I think I agree with you. I okay, know. does any, I don't, I'm not looking necessarily, I'm just, I'm putting this out there. Can anyone strike down what I said based upon Torah? No, because Jehusha still healed the people. He says better do good than it was evil on the Shabbat days. And that would still be a Shabbat day considerably on the high Shabbats. So it would be better to help the poor than to not help the poor and help the people that here's, can't here's, get food. And here's the bottom line. If, if you're if you're offering this up and, and you don't take pay on those days, Grand, is, is what I would suggest. Because if you take pay on those days, then you're going to be falling. You're, there's gonna, there could be That money could be cursed. And that's, that's not what we want. We want to be everything. We want to come in. We want it to be holy. We want Yah's hand upon everything. And so that, that is what I would suggest. And again, I don't, I don't have the answers for it. Um, I got three bobbleheads here. We don't all have answers for it. Um, but I, I guess that is. Does anyone have anything else on this? No. no. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's the best advice we have. If anyone has anything out there for the grand, um, please put it in a comment. Let's let's get this up as a quorum of people. We're looking for more witnesses. We're looking for more thoughts, more brains, more people that are putting this down. And more than anything, we are looking how to serve Yah to the very, very best of our abilities. And um, it, like I told her in a comment, if she was out there slanging cars, like it was Granny's car sales or something, and these were the days she was making extra money, come on down, Granny, we'll sell you the oldest car that we have, a 79 Buick LeSabre, you'll get it for half price, and Granny's out there selling it, that would be a bad deal, right? Don't. Yeah, but she's helping people, so. Right, she's feeding people. Not only helping people, but she's feeding people. And so, all right, and Nicole, do you have anything on that? <coughs> Excuse me. She has a no. cough. That's it. No, I, I agree, like, if possible. 
don't take money for those days if you have to work those days. Because here's the gig, is if we give her bad advice and she follows the bad advice, we will fall under the same curse as well. And the other thing, though, is she took this job because she needs the money. So it may not be feasible for her to do that either. So... Um, I believe it would be feasible. I believe it would be feasible for her to donate that because if she's, if, if grand, this is the thing, you don't want cursed money. And so if there's a way and they may not, I mean, you may go to your boss and say, Hey, I don't want paid. I I have to take these days off these days. And I mean, that may be a great witness as well saying, Hey, I am, I am here to help. I'm here to serve, but I cannot take payment on those days. You know, that, that is a great example. People go like, why can't you take payment? Well, because they're, they're feasts of our creator. That, that might bring them into something else. So that's the best I have. All right. Now, um, a couple of things here from yesterday. I really appreciate Zachary Z. So this is what he had on the Nazarene stuff. Um, as far as taking a Nazarite vow and dead things go in only dead and dead things go is only dead people that you can't go near. If you remember, Samson killed a lot of people, the jawbone of a donkey. He also ate honey out of the carcass of a lion, an unclean animal. I had to figure that out before I took my Nazarite vow because I have animals like you guys and couldn't take the vow if I if that was going to be a problem. Thoughts? Uh, that's probably correct. That's, that's probably that's right. That's really good, that's yeah. That's really good, actually, yeah. I pinned this comment. And hopefully it's still pinned. YouTube does crazy stuff. But see, I don't know if it's pinned. All right, well, I'm going to pin it again. All right, and then he also came up with another thing here. Um... That he said, as far as the length of the vow is concerned, it's a personal choice. You decide on before the vow, typically a year, plus there aren't any hard and fast rules concerning the length of the vow, except for Samson, who was to be a Nazarite for life. Okay, That's right, because he was told that he was never supposed to cut his hair in yeah. the womb. Yeah, so that was that was beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much, Zachary Z. I, I very much appreciate that. Um, and also, this is um, from... I don't even know how to say this guy's name, but he's been with us for a while. Char- Chardrog. Chardrog. Um, this is when we were talking about um, the Nazarite vows, right? Um, should it be for us? And he goes, it's a commandment because it's like lo- owning a car. You don't need a car, but there's laws for it. You don't have to be a Nazarite, but if you do, there are all laws. So put it like this in your list. If right. you want to be a Nazarite, this is the law for it. So it is a commandment because anybody can be one. All right, very, very good stuff. I'm so excited about the people that we have here and the people that um, comment with us and debate with us, and I guess not even debate, but just help us out because we don't have all the answers. All right, so today's lesson is a little long, so let's get into it, gentlemen. And um, I'm bringing up my handy-dandy split screen, and we are in numbers seven. Nicole, how are you doing? I'm good. How's everything? It's good. You sleep well? Yep. Everything good? Everything's good. Nothing? Breakfast is ready. Breakfast is ready. You are such a good wife. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. Number seven. And it came to pass on the day that Moshe had set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Yashrael, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes and were over them that were numbered, offered. All right, Prince's who are, leaders of the tribes. Yeah, but leaders. Princes. Prince is like a really like a royalty thing, I would think. I don't feel like... Would leaders. they be royalty? Would the leaders of those tribes be some sort of royalty? Well, they'd be someone they'd come to for advice, but I don't know if they'd be like princes. I feel like princes is just a... Not the correct word for what they're looking for because they were just like Moshe. The king did. has princes. Yeah, the king has princes because those are the sons of the king, but these guys... Well, no, it says right here, who were the princes of the tribes. The the king actually says princes. King James. King James. Yeah, the King James is what I'm saying. So anyway, um, it's either leaders or, I guess, princes. Uh, Does that make you guys the princes of this house? I don't know. I I guess so. Is it princes or princess? Uh, Princes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. Got to figure out the trick to this one. (laughs) All right. And they brought their offering before Yahuwah. Six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes and for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. Okay, so we're talking six covered wagons, a wagon for two of the princes. Okay, so basically, yeah, so there's a huge covered wagon, and Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe saying, Take it of them that they may do all the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, and you shall give them unto the Levium. To every man according to his service. And Moshe took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levium. Okay, so this is interesting. So this time they get, I mean, at one point they've gotten skins, right? They've gotten, mm-hmm. one of them got skins of, uh, at some point. Now this time they get wagons. They get like 
They, they get transport. Yeah, they get wagons and oxen. All right. And Moshe took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levium. Two wagons and four oxen he gave them unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Mer Merari. Did I say that right? Merari. 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 According unto their service, unto the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. Why didn't they get anything? I mean, it says it because they, they bear it upon them, but why didn't everybody else have to bear their stuff? Uh, uh, it says in the NIV because they were to carry on their shoulders the holy things. Oh. Oh, so these wagons are for transport. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys. So I bet you. I bet you these they, wagons they and these oxen out. were like tip top. I bet these were the best of the best. This I bet the they, oxen were just. This is where they put the Michigan. They put all the stuff. They loaded it all on the back of these wagons. They took it, but you had to carry the ark by. Could they get all hand. of that in in? It was well, six I mean, wagons. What did you say? Six wagons. Some big wagons. <laughs> it must have been big wagons. A, a lot of oxen as well in front of those. Well, how many oxen? It said twelve, right? Uh, one has uh, four. One. One yeah, each ox, each cart gets two oxen. Yeah, and those oxen, those things are like like uh, cows on steroids. They're like <laughs> huge, right? And so they're monsters. All right, and the princes offered. Did I get nine? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the princes. Sorry, and the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Even the princes offered their offering before the altar. And so, again, the leaders, the leaders of the... So they separated the leaders, they pulled them up, and they, they were basically sanctifying them a little different, I think. All right, and Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was Naksan, the son of Amnidav, of the tribe of Yahuda. And his offering was one silver charger. The weight thereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. Okay, mine says not a uh, charger. Mine says a silver dish. A silver dish. And mine says a silver platter. Okay, silver and dish, silver platter. Wow. Platter would seem like it would not be, um, it would be something different, right? Um... Let's see. Okay, so one spoon. So let's go into this. One spoon of 10 shekels of gold full of incense. How, what? One spoon of 10 shekels? That, that would be huge. That Mine would be says a, a golden bowl. Oh, golden bowl? Of 10 shekels. All right. Eli, where are, you, are you off on this? Yeah, one gold 14. dish weighing 10 shekels. Oh, that's... Why would they have one spoon in this? So the king has one spoon too. The king and the, the sephir are almost the same. And they, they don't make a lot of sense. Why would you have a huge, heavy spoon? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, one spoon of ten shekels of gold full of incense. See, that doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't have a spoon of incense. You would have a bowl full mm -hmm. of incense. So I'd there's... say a ladle, one gold ladle. Okay, one gold ladle. Oh, okay, that might be it. That might be interesting. That's your style of your scriptures, right? Yeah. All right, so that makes more sense than a spoon, so a ladle. All right. And I basically it weighs four ounces. Four ounces? That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a hefty spoon. That's a hefty spoon. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. That was the offering of Naksan, the son of Amniadav. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, prince of Yissachar, did offer. He offered for his offering one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation, one spoon of gold of 10 shekels full of incense. I've read this before. Where do we read this? Oh, <laughs> right All right. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliav, the son of Kevon, Ke Kelon, prince of the children of Zebulun, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon, 
of 10 shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliev, the son of Kilon. Of the fourth day, on the fourth day, Eletzer, the son of Shedir, prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliezer, the son of Shedir. Mine says two cattle instead of two oxen. It keeps saying that, but so I don't know if that's cattle. I don't know so much oxen or cattle. I think it could be anything. A cattle could be probably oxen. It'd probably be like a herd of zebras, too. And I feel says oxen. No, I'm pretty sure they have a different... What is it? They... What would they be? I know lions have a, a pride of lions. Um, pride of lions, right? That's not a, it's not a cattle. It's not a zebra. No. Nope. It's a herd or something. I don't know. They're all herds, right? It's a cattle herd, you think? Uh, I don't know. All right. On the fifth day, Shel Yumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai, the prince of the children of Shimon, did offer. His offering was one silver charger. The weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shelumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Deel-Ul, prince of the children of Gad, offered. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, a silver bull of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliasaph, the son of Deul. All right. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amnihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. All right. Who's falling asleep on me? Not me. Anyone out there? I see you. Listen up. It's the same thing over and over. I know. Eh. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense. One young bullock. One ram. One lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Amniod. On the eighth day, offered Gamiel, the son of Pedia Shur, prince of the children of Manasha. His offering was, we should know this by heart now, one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bull of 70 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of what? Fine flour. Fine flour. Mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, Five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamiel, the son of Pedeshur. So what are we talking about? We're talking about two oxen, five rams. So we have two, five, seven, five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen things were being offered Plus the right goat. there. And the goat. Well, there's five he goats. So there's two oxen, five rams, five goats, five lambs. So five, ten, fifteen. Put the and, verse right above that. And ooh, one male goat. Uh, oh, the one male goat. Offering. So there's eighteen. Five, ten, fifteen. Oh wait. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 animals killed on these things. All right. 18 times 12. Uh, yeah, 18 times 12. What is that, boys? Sing. Come on. Let's do this. Common core. One, two, three. And I don't think anyone has this. All right. On the sixth, ninth day, uh, Aviadan, the son of Gidoni, prince of the children of Binyamin, offered. 
His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bull of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. It's actually 21 animals. 21 animals? One young bull, one ram, one lamb, one male goat, two oxen, five ram, five males, five male goats, five male lambs. That's 21. It's a bloodbath. All right. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Abnadan, the son of Gidoni. On this tenth day, Achiaz Ezar, the son of Amnia Shaddai, prince of the children of Dan, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, this one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for an oblation. One golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Akia Ezer, the son of Amnia Shaddai. All right, guys, close your Bibles. We're almost done with this. Everyone over here, close your Bibles. We're going to see how good of your memory you guys have. Okay, I'm reading it to you guys. You guys are filling the numbers. On the 11th day, Pagiel, the son of Ochran, prince of the children of Asher, offered. His offering was? One silver charger. One silver charger. The weight whereof was? 130 shekels. Got it. One silver bowl of? 70 shekels. Okay, and after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of? Incense. No. Fine flour. Fine, fine flour. flour. Mingled with what? Oil. Oil. Of an obligation. Why did I think oblation. Because the, the, the bowl, I got messed up on the bowl. Boo! We just went through this 11 I, times. I know. <laughs> All right. So how many golden spoons of 10 shekels? One. One. Golden spoon. And what's the f golden spoon full of, Cade? Incense. Incense. There we go. One young bullock. One ram. How many lambs? Five. Oh, uh, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering. I know, so remember All right, it. how many kid of the goats for sin offering? Uh, no! One. It's oh, one. Oh. <laughs> one kid of the goats. My, my right. say kid of the goats. She says one male goat. Oh, jeez. All right. I'm just right. All right, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, how many oxen? Two. Two. Okay, how many rams? Mom, stop. Five. Stop cheating over there, mother. <laughs> get, out, get out of your thing and stop cheating for these kids. Okay, uh, Jaden, how many he goats? Five. How many lambs? Five. Uh, okay. Yeah, so five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. That was the offering of Pagiel, the son of Ochran. On the twelfth day, Akiri, the son of Enon, prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. What was his offering, Cade? His offering? Okay. One, sil one silver charger. Okay. What was the weight whereof? 130 shekels. Okay. One what? Silver dish. Yeah, silver bowl. Silver bowl. Of how many shekels? 70. Okay, and the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of? Fine flour mixed with oil. All right, for an oblation. Okay, what what is it have next? That's 10 shekels? The, uh, the spoon. One golden spoon, yeah, the, the huge heavy incense. spoon. And what's it full of, Kate? Incense. Got it. All right, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for an ascending smoke offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, Jaden, how many oxen? Two. How many rams? Five. How many he goats? Five. five. How many lambs? <laughs> five. All right, that was it. So, yes, yeah, so we have five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This is the offering of Akira, the son of Inan. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the prince of Yashrael. Twelve chargers of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold. Each charger of silver weighing 130 shekels, each bowl 70. All the silver vessels weighed 2,400 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. Sounds like a lot. The golden spoons were 12, full of incense, weighing 10 shekels apiece. After the shekel of the sanctuary, all the gold of the spoons was 120 shekels. So if this was a ladle, why would it be a ladle? Why, why would they have that ladle full of incense? So you like dump it on the fire or something? What, why, would they have a, why would they have that? Why would they have it like that? Uh, why not? Prices. Why not say ten spoonfuls of incense instead of a ladle of incense? So it would continually burn. Yeah, it's just it's a measuring device, right? It seems like a measure. It's all full of incense. If you have a, a ladle and you have it all full, you scoop that thing full of incense, and then it weighs you have the exact same incense. I think I don't know. All right, 
The golden spoons were twelve, full of incense, weighing ten shekels apiece. After the shekel of the sanctuary, all the gold of the spoons was a hundred and twenty shekels. All of the all the oxen for the ascending smoke offering were twelve bullocks. The twelve ram the tw the rams twelve. The lambs of the first year twelve with their oblation. On the kids of the goats for sin offering twelve. All right, here you guys give me the answers. To this all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were twenty and four bullocks. The rams, how many? Rams, uh, 12. No. No. Others uh, times 5. Uh-huh. Uh, 60. 12, yeah, 12 times, 12 times 5. Good job, good job. Your teacher did well for you. Okay, the he goats, how many? Uh, that's his 60. Uh, 60, yeah. Yeah, the lambs of the first year? 60. 60. All right, so we have 666 six, six there. We have 60, 60, 60. Oh. That was the dedication of the altar. After that, it was anointed. And when Moshe was gone into the tabernacle, the assembly to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was up on the ark of testimony from between the two cherubim, and he spoke unto him. So that I was speaking to Moshe or an angel? Uh, I would think, I don't think an angel is going to come out from the mercy seat. I think that's where Yah is going to come from. It's a capital H on he, so is Yah. Yeah, so, so the, all of this, so they just got done with a massive slaughter fest, right? And then at the very end of that, Moshe goes into the temple and um, he's he hears a voice. Isn't that isn't that crazy? Yeah, he talks to Yah. Like I think there's only a few people that ever like directly talk with Yah. Enoch, Enoch, I mean, Enoch <laughs> Moses, Moshe, Yehoshua. I think probably Elijah. I would say Elijah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Elijah was taken off and taken away. Um, I think Ezra. Ezra had was talking to Yah. He was he was talking to angels. Oh, but I think Adam. It, Adam talked to him. Adam talked to Yah. Yeah. So there's there's some people. So. Hopefully one day Yah will come down and directly speak to us. What are you going to do if there's you guys go outside and there's like a burning bush? Are you guys going to... What do you do first? The, if the bush starts talking to us, you're going to take off, sand, you gonna sandals take off, off. Take off your sandals? I guess probably sand is holy. I guess probably but what sand. happens if your brother just went out and set the bush on fire? Oh, it doesn't talk to me. I, probably, I mean, if it's, sitting there, if it's in there getting consumed, it doesn't call out to him and be like... Oh, All right, who set this on okay. fire? Someone's yeah, if, 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 if someone sets it on fire and it's just sitting there burning, probably time to put the bush out. Yeah, it's, you should put the bush out. But it, we're in the green season, so it'll probably it's be hard to burn something. That's just why it'd be incredible if something started burning like this around here at this time. All right, I think that's it. I think we have uh, done our duty here. I think we are good. Anyone have anything else, Kate? Um, no, this is just more like the kind of like the beginnings of their whole... Sacrifice. Like connection to Yah with everything. Like all leaders are consecrated now. All the Levites are kind of in, in like uh, rotation now. You think everything. Moses knew what was going to happen at the end of this whole thing? That Yah would talk to him from behind the the, the mercy seat. I don't know because he went in there maybe to see if he'd talk. Or something. Maybe he had spooked him. You think that scared him? I mean, he probably might have jumped when he heard a voice back. Who's in here besides me? It, it might. Yeah, it might be weird. It might be odd. Um, but yeah, I guess we'd be at peace with Yah. And um, there's only a peace that y'all can have. Um, take us home. Eli, salvation begins where? Yeah, salvation begins at the cross where repentance of sins is with yeah. Yahushua Mashiach. That's right. And how do we how do we repent for our sins, Jade? Uh, we ask for forgiveness. We ask Yahuwah for forgiveness using Yahushua's blood for whatever we have tore us, we have broken. Do we pray to Jesus? Do we pray to Messiah Yahushua? No, no. There, we only pray to Yahuwah because he is the only one true Elohim and he... And Yehoshua is his son and not the Why Elohim. wouldn't we pray to Messiah Yehoshua? Uh, one, because he's a son. Two, he's not Yahuwah. And uh, there should be no other Elohim or mighty ones before Yahuwah, so we should pray directly to Yahuwah. Why is, what other reason? I'm still looking for something else. Why, why wouldn't we pray to Messiah Yehoshua? Because Yehoshua said, Our Father who art in heaven is how you should pray. Yep, he gave us an example. He gives an example to live by. Okay, thank you guys very, very much. Uh, much love to everybody out there. Huge grizzly bear hug um, coming close. Urgh, that's a big grizzly bear hug. Hopefully my beard didn't get in your face. Um, much love to everybody out there. All right, guys. Let's All right, do this. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.